this week on Kentucky Field. Here he comes, right here. We're taking advantage of the state's public land. Oh, good shot, Chad. And to start things off, we've got people running rabbits on Clay WMA. Next. Hey, look for Blue up there. He says he's on point in front of you. More public access and more dogs. He's in front of me. Is he pointing? Yep. But this time, we're flushing birds. Then we head to Otter Creek, just south of Louisville, for another hunt with man's best friend, but a different critter. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Yeah, we got one. Sweet. Yeah, muskrat. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth, healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good pheasant, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. What do you think? Like bull. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. This week, our entire show is focusing on public land hunting. First up, we're chasing rabbits. About 10 dogs and quite a few hunters. This ought to be a good time. guys that travel from all over the state brought their dogs here today to meet up, have good fellowship, and, and run dogs. That's right. We're here at Clay Wildlife Management Area, and just excellent small game hunting here, rabbit, grouse, quail. You can't beat it. We sure do appreciate them coming out with some real nice dogs mm -hmm. and, and enjoying the day. Oh, there he is. Dead rabbit. <laughs> Dead! There you go. <laughs> There you go, fish got him. Yeah. <laughs> See if I can remember the Latin name, Silvelagus Floridanus. How's that? All the way from college. <laughs> dead, 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 dead here. Well, boys, the dogs did real good on that rabbit. He, you know, he went around and went all the way down and then doubled back on him and came yeah. back. You got the first bunny of the day, right yes. there. Yes, the commissioner always gets the first rabbit. That's right. <laughs> That's why he's supposed to work. You've been involved in running uh, Beagle Hounds for how long? Uh, since I guess I was 15, so the early, I'm saying the early 80s. Yeah, it's in your blood then. Yeah, oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, I love it. Now, you ever been to Clay, WMA? No, first time. Okay, first time for me too. Yeah. Good, I'm looking forward to watching you work these dogs. We'll, we'll give it a try anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There it is, right there. Yeah, that's a hot rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I always like to wait a while until I see which direction he's gonna yeah. go in. When you get started, you can hunt more than a day on, on just any of these little roads that take off on clay. This, there's a lot of land here. That's right, I think anybody who comes out here with a pack of beagle hounds can hunt all day and probably not even cover a tenth of this area. <laughs> here he comes right here. I bet he didn't miss. That rabbit's probably in there just hopping along. You know, he's quite a way ahead of them dogs. I tell you what, I've seen this man catch some fish, but this is the first time I've ever been uh, rabbit hunting with him. Well, he's got a 22. I know. I don't know how he cast that I thing, know. do you? No. <laughs> I, I can he shoot some fish with it. <laughs> I know you fish year round, but uh, you know, it's nice to get off the water every now and then in the middle of the winter to come out here and do this, isn't it? It is, then, you know, if I'm not on the water, I'm in the woods. We got phenomenal resource here in Kentucky, my well to oh, enjoy it. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, I love to be in the boat, but uh, this is probably my, right there with it, getting out and listening to the rabbit dogs and, and uh, shooting a couple of bunnies, it doesn't get any better than that. No. <laughs> Small game, 
game hunting. It's it's here. It's happening right here in Kentucky. It is. We we put a lot of emphasis on small game in, in the last three years. The, the sportsmen asked for it, and we responded. And we're doing a lot of management all over this state on our WMAs. Coming right at us. Here he comes, right here. Oh, good shot, Chad. <laughs> Running right at me. Good shot. Dead, dead, dead. good job. Dead. dead, dead, dead. Tell you what, that rabbit, it, that was self-defense. He was gonna run over me. <laughs> he was gonna run you over, wasn't he? <laughs> he was coming right at me. Big old fat rabbit there. Probably been eating this Milo of these heads here. Commissioner, you got one day left to hunt. What are you gonna pursue? What type of game here in Kentucky? Well, I always hunt what the good Lord and nature provides. So <laughs> if it's cold and rainy, it's gonna be ducks. If it's overcast and nice day, it'll be rabbits. If I got geese working the field, it'll be geese. But whatever's coming my way that day. Right there you go. There you go. Get there you go. Dead. There are probably another one or two out this ridge. He was right here in this grass. You know, the number one thing I hear, don't have a place to run dogs. The number one thing I hear, hey, there's some, some wildlife managed areas that have plenty of area to run, yeah, run beagles. Just, please go on our website and take a look at what we've got out there, because there's going to be a wildlife management area within driving distance of you, and probably it does allow some pretty good small game hunting. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but most of them. Good thing this thing tripped over that log and flipped yep. before you shot. Well, I think it broke its neck. <laughs> <laughs> you said you have, you have shot rabbits quite a bit with a 22. Oh, right? I have. Yeah. yeah. We used to rabbit hunt a lot, and yeah. I don't know, had just something, want to step up the game sometimes, oh, yeah. you know. I don't kill a lot. Get one come in and set every once in a while, I'll shoot at him. That's perfect. You got him one with a 22. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty impressed. He's all over. See that one? Yeah, he's a jumper. Yeah, he took the head off of it from that high, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so you slowed him down and put, then just popped him right in the head, huh? Yeah. Nice shot. You know, you always close your show out where you encourage people to seek permission mm -hmm. and then thank the landowner. But in this case, the landowner, to me, is every sportsman in this state that has a license, a hunting license, a fishing license, it doesn't matter what kind of license you have, you're a paying customer and it's your dollars that go forward to, to manage these areas the way they are. So they're the landowner. So I just wanna thank the sportsman for being a paying customer and supporting our areas and for being the landowner in this case. If you're looking for a good place to chase some birds and run your dogs, Clay WMA may be the place for you. We're at Clay WMA here today on the Upland Quail Quota Hunt. We're in the back of the property towards the river on the upper unit. Right now we're hunting in a native grass field, trying to find either quail or possibly a grouse. If the weather would stay like this all day, we'd be in good shape. This is prime time. Birds ought to be feeding right about now. How big is this WMA again? It's uh, somewhere around 9,000 acres. Okay, and uh, what percentage open land? 20% open, 80% forested. Come on, dogs. Come on, Willie. Hey, down here. Down this way. I'm Jacob Stewart. I'm the manager here at Clay WMA, and hunting with me today is uh, Ben Robertson, our assistant director for the Wildlife Division, and Zach Danks, our grouse and turkey coordinator. Here! Come on! I want y'all to picture something right here. There's a hunter who came around and his dog was pointed right there by that tree. Oh, he's holding tight. It was beautiful. Hunter comes around behind him, pushes the bird about, I don't know, 10 yards away. Boom, boom! Bird flies off. It was terrible. I mean, you remember that, Zach? You remember that, Zach? Do we know that, Hunter? You're talking. You remember that, Zach? Fabrication. You remember that, Zach? Total fabrication. <laughs> Quail hunt? No, pheasant hunt. Pheasant flies, lands in a tree across the road. Boom! Somebody else shoots the bird. <laughs> Thanks for uh, pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, don't worry. I shot at so few wild quail this year when we do get something up. Yeah, you may not remember what to do. I'm probably gonna be about 10 feet behind them. <laughs> <laughs> the upper quota hunt has 12 units, three hunters per party. I see some hunters way over on that other, top of that hill way over there. Oh, I got you now, I see them. Okay, we got them both pointed. No, Willie. No, Willie. Good boy, Blue. Good boy. So we're, what, a week past the uh, pheasant hunt on this WMA? The pheasant hunt is a put and take hunt that we have here at Clay WMA. Uh, we've been doing it for oh, somewhere around 17 years uh, for the opportunity for people to hunt. We put out oh, 420 birds and have uh, 70 hunters for three days come out and shoot. Rooster! We're in the cleanup period from now to the end of the year and we've gotten up two or three on this quail quota hunt. And that was a beautiful rooster. put forth with uh, the mission to manage the habitat on here and make it suitable for uh, good hunting opportunities for the public uh, to come and enjoy themselves and uh, hopefully encounter game and have a good enjoyable hunt. This is a pretty grousey little edge it looks like. I can see grouse being in there. This is one of the annual food plots. It's Milo that they plant and uh, they're not always the best places to hunt honestly. The bigger value for quail management is the ground disturbance. So Jacob will come in here and he'll plant this this year, but he'll leave it alone for a year or two. And a lot of just natural plants will come back. You get a lot of ragweeds, desmodium, the little stick tights that stick to your hunting pants. Uh, that's the stuff that quail really love. So the bigger benefits are gonna probably come next year when this starts to come back. I think we should probably keep going straight ahead here and hit that creek. Hey, look for Blue up there. He says he's on point in front of you. He's in front of me. Is he pointing? Yep. Not sure there's any birds in here though. Sure was, Covey. Quail? Yeah, here's a quail, here's a Covey. Wasn't expecting that. Blue nailed him and Lucy had her head up like this, but she's so tired. She. I didn't give her enough credit. And they, uh... Do we need to come over there and chase them? Yeah, we probably should. How many were there? Um, I'd say there was at least 10 birds. Next year, we won't have the quota hunt. Uh, next year, the Clay WMA is gonna be open to grouse and quail two days a week, Mondays and Saturdays. Easy, dog. That's where they went, Zach. Look in the hunting guide to make sure everything goes through. But as of right now, the commission has passed that to allow more opportunity for hunting. Sucker held tight. They sure did. This is probably where the birds have been all day, is in this woody cover. Because we haven't been finding them in the grass. A lot of times people overlook this stuff, they don't hunt in here. You're looking at 16 days worth of, worth of being able to come here and chase some, yeah. some quail and grouse. By stopping December 31st, we're, you know, we're cutting it off when Winter will get severe and hawk migration, that kind of thing. You're gonna have a lot of birds just taken naturally. So it's, uh, it's why we're trying to be conservative on an area that really focuses on management. Is, is that right? Yeah, because this is a both a quail and a grouse focal area. So uh, it is important that we you know, uh, try not to make uh, hunting pressure additive. I mean, these are, it's like grouse hunting in here. You shoot a tree every time you're shooting at a bird. Good boy. I'd say though people probably don't want to emulate our kind of hunting pressure. I <laughs> know our, our hunting pressure is yeah, uh, yeah. is no uh, is not really pressure at all. Nah, we just keep keep, keep the birds exercising though. Okay, we got them both pointed 50 yards. This way? Yeah, toward that tall both tree. Both of them pointed. Both of them. Easy, Willie. Easy. They're both pointing your way. 
Easy, Willie. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Oh, there they go. Dang. Good Lord, look at them climb. Look at them. They're still climbing. <gasps> wow, good dog. Good dog. That was a nice cover right there. It sure was. Wow, oh, golly. Oh, man, there was a bunch of birds in there. Wow. God, that was pretty. I just, it was so far out and it was in there. I, there was no way I was gonna be able to pick out a bird. Oh, that's just, I mean, look where they are, right here on the edge. Rank native grasses, blackberry briars, and into the woods across the draw. Ain't this fun? Oh, man, it's a, it's a blast. Uh, there's nothing better than a day behind a bird dog and uh, just watch them work. We sure have fun with it. Oh, we, we sure work do. Hard. Right. This is just uh, one of those days you look forward to all year. All year. Now let's check in and see who's catching what and where in this week's fishing report. Hi, this is Eric Cummins with your Southwest Kentucky Fishing Report. Barron and Green River Lakes are both at Winter Pool and the fish are keyed into distressed shad. Good baits for bass will be suspending jerk baits, swim baits, or float and fly. Crappie will be keyed in on soft plastics with some version of white chartreuse pink and blue in depths from 12 to 25 foot of water. Bass anglers at Green River Lake should be aware that jerk baits are liable to attract some muskies, so be sure to gear up accordingly. At Barren Tailwater, hybrids, catfish, and crappie, and walleye will be your best bets there. Green River Tailwater, walleye, catfish, and muskie. And at Nolan Tailwater, a little more of a mixed bag with walleye, white bass, black bass, catfish, and rainbow trout. As always, good luck and good fishing. Be sure your life jacket's got your back. This is Marcy Anderson with the Fishing Report for Southeast Kentucky. As of late, the cold temperatures have slowed things down on area lakes. Water temperatures are running in the low 40s and there has been some ice in the back of creeks. However, if you're willing to brave the cold, smallmouth bass on Cumberland, Laurel, and Dale Hollow would be good bets this time of the year. Target main lake points and submerged islands using jigs at a chance for a trophy smallmouth. Fishing for walleye and sauger below Wolf Creek Dam should be starting to heat up. Jigs and minnows are a good option to target them. Trout fishing can also be good this time of year, and we normally see some big trout being caught. Try using spinners and small crankbaits. Striped bass should be in the upper half of the major tributaries on Lake Cumberland. Drifting small shad and alewives are a good option, as well as casting dollflies or grubs. So good luck and stay safe out on the water. This is Rob Roll in the Northwestern Fishery District. Both of our major reservoirs, Rough River Lake and Nolan River Lake, along with all of our smaller impoundments, have been, for the most part, completely frozen over the last couple of weeks or so. About the only open water we've had is the Ohio River and Green River. And although the temperatures have been bitter, a few people have braved those to fish for sauger. And anglers are picking up a few sauger below the dams at Candleton, Newburgh, and Uniontown, or J.T. Myers, as well as below Lock 1 on the Green River in Spotsville. So that's an update from the Northwestern Fishery District. Remember, be safe out this time of year. Hypothermia can set in very quickly. To wrap up this show focused on public land hunting, we're going hunting after dark. So I'm here today at Otter Creek Outdoor Recreational Area and I have the biologist, Ryan Taylor. We're going after raccoons tonight. I'm really excited about this. It's been a long time since I've done it. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, that wildlife management areas and places like Otter Creek are open to raccoon hunting after night. You guys are open here. Tell me a little bit about how you go about uh, coon hunting here at Otter Creek. Well at Otter Creek, um, we have right at 1,800 acres that you can hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, Otter Creek's comprised of 2,221 acres. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can come onto the area, use a, get a user permit, or you can get an annual user permit. And you can come onto the area right around dark or before the gates close. And you can stay on the area as long as you want. Tell me a little bit about why it's important to keep raccoons and other, other species in check. The biggest thing that we're worried about is small game. Uh, raccoons are known to be nest raiders. Mm -hmm. For quail, even they will consume rabbits and uh, 
also wild turkey. Mm. Well, hey, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there and, uh, and hopefully getting a couple of these raccoons out for you. Sounds great. All right. So we're here at Otter Creek. Jake, you've made a heck of a trip to come up here to hunt tonight, haven't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're About three and a half hours. You're from McCreary County, and uh, we're hunting a wildlife management area. And uh, we've got uh, about 1,600 hunt huntable acres here. And uh, I tell you, there's a lot of a lot of raccoons here. So I'm hoping these dogs uh, don't have to go too far and get started. Well, I hope they don't put me to shame. You know, a dog <laughs> will be a dog sometimes. I but. can already tell these dogs are as, as excited about this as you and I am. And it's been it's been maybe 20 years since I've been on a raccoon hunt. So oh, we, I, I'm really excited about it. We ought to have good fun at it. Well, I think these dogs are ready. I think I'm ready. Uh, I'm really excited. You know, one thing about Otter Creek is we will be using a shotgun tonight, but that's because the rules rules here dictate that. Yeah. So a little different, but uh, still should be running the dogs is the most fun. So yeah. Well, no matter if they treat a coon or not, they get an exercise and they get fun to get out and do it. And we're gonna get exercise too. So. Are we ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm turning on one. So I'm guessing you've probably done this all your life, huh? Pretty much off and on. Uh, we started out with what were, with half hounds, was half cur and half of uh, uh, red bones. Yeah. And we hunted them day and night. We treat squirrels with them uh -huh. and coons at night. Yeah. And uh, kind of got out of it, got into bird hunting real big with my grandpa, and then got out of that because he couldn't go grouse hunting and stuff no more. Mm -hmm. And the guy I started working with got me back into coon hunting, and I've had it bad ever since. <laughs> That's two different dogs, Barney. No, it's not. There's a... You may have one. I hope that young dog's got one. They're split trees. Split trees. One down there and one up here. Good girl. That's a den tree. You know what is it? Sure is a den tree. I'd say they're going in there. That young dog done a good job. Come here, doggy. Good girl. Dead. Dead. How often will they tree a possum? They better not. <laughs> Try to keep them off of them, huh? Yeah, I don't like slick tails. Yeah. <laughs> the dogs have done really good. Very, as soon as we turned them loose, they got on a spot where we found a den. Yep. And then we turned them loose again and they ran a little ways. Probably 45 minutes later, they did get treed. Now we couldn't go in after them because they had gotten off a property boundary. 10 minutes, yep. we're treed up right here. Yeah, they're treed up and maybe we get down there and have a big bushy tail looking down at us and you let that, that 12 gauge bark. <laughs> well, let's go see what we got. Sounds good to me. I get a real good shot right here. All right. There you go. You get you a Daniel Boone cap out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Need one to keep his bald head covered. It's, it's getting thin up there. I tell you what, when that coon hit the ground, I think that just got them more and more fired up. Yep. Come here, girl. Well, Jake, your dogs really impressed me. I appreciate it. That was it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. We got a great little exercise. <clears throat> what do you say for for a guy who runs dogs about these WMAs? I would say, get after it because there's plenty of hunting for them. You get really proud of these dogs, don't you? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, that young dog right there, just 19 months old. A lot of people consider her a finished dog, but she's not. Yeah. Uh, she's doing a real good job. She's the one that treated in front of the old dog, and you think the old dog would treat in front of the young <laughs> dog, but the young dogs treat. She treated a den and a coon, and the old dog treated a coon and a den, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was a great time, and uh, you know, for a short night, we, uh, we had plenty of action. Now, let's see who else is out there having fun as we check out this week's ones that didn't get away. Here we have Braden Simmons, who took his very first deer, which was a six-point buck, in Bremen, Kentucky. Braden was using a 410 slug. Nice job. Here's Tyler Simmons of Bremen, Kentucky with his very first deer, also taken with a 410 slug. Nice job. 
Here we have David Smith of Cumberland County who's got this really nice largemouth bass caught in Harlan County. It was photographed and released. Nice job. Here we have Quinn Hornback with a turkey taken with a bow and arrow on Thanksgiving morning. This turkey was taken in Shelby County. Nice job. Fred Allen here is holding a really nice snapping turtle that weighed 25 pounds caught in a farm pond in Shelby County. 2018 has already started off with a bang. Kentucky Field's been out on the ice and hunting in the snow. Make sure you tune in in future weeks for those episodes. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Till next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.